Okay, you gotta give us a moment. waiting for this moment the whole day. Hello. Welcome to the Mariah Report. I'm Martin Burgess. And I'm Dan Enriquez. And we're back. And we are back with moments. Yeah. We got some moments we got a lot to talk about today. We have a special guest coming up. Yeah, DJ Bright Light, Bright Light. Yes. Uh, he's throwing a Mariah party here in New York City. So tune in for all the, all the details. Yeah, it's sort of like the pre-party for the Caution Tour. Yeah. That's coming on um, this Saturday, the 23rd. The party is. Yes, the party. And then Mariah, Mariah. will be here on the 25th. On and the Monday. We'll having fabulous moments. Yeah. Yes. Mariah Weekend. Absolutely. Again. But not like crazy Mariah Weekend like it was for the Caution release. Uh-huh. That was like a crazy Mariah week. I know, because we had to go uptown, we had to go to Brooklyn. Oh, my God. Wait in the cold. Oh, yeah. And then we had our live show. It was, it was a lot. Oh, our live show. Oh, Good yes. Morning America. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, there was a gosh. lot. There was a lot. No, so we're not doing that. No. We're going to have a fun we're Saturday. Very civilized. Yeah. <laughs> very civilized. <laughs> very civilized. <laughs> um, so that's after the break. So tune in. Yes. Have some fun Mariah talk. Yeah, we'll talk about a no no, the remixes the that new, came out, all of that stuff. Yeah, well, it's slightly behind the Mariah talk because last week we had Misty Copeland. I on. know, how fun was that? It's been so much fun. I think the cat is causing trouble. She, there she goes. Um, Misty Copeland. So, it turned out so good. Hashtag still obsessed with Misty. Still obsessed, right? Girl, I can't stop. I think I want to watch the documentary again. Yeah, it's it a good so, one. Yeah. It gives you all the insights and the whole story and everything. I know, but it just keeps boggling my mind that Mariah started it all for her. I because you just never imagine like what it can do, what that influence can do, and when you have it and just passing it down and passing it onward, yeah, to others. But it's also Amazing. just a proof of concept that if you do listen to Make It Happen and you really take it in, you can do it. Absolutely, girl. I'm telling you, that's why that song was my song yeah. back in the day, girl. It still uh-huh. is today. It's a jam. Um, I still quote it every oh, now and then. Oh yes. You know, I was thinking the other day, I was like, oh my gosh, like, what is my favorite version of Make It Happen? And I think, even though it always changes, because I love, um, I love this one. That the, Now the cat is giving us She's moments. doing vocals in the back, background vocals. Um, uh, I love the one from Fantasy, Madison Square Garden. The one that I see oh. you up there one. I mean, that's good, but I go back to Divas Live 98. No, I love that one too. I do. And Unplugged. No, I love that one too. I do. <laughs> but I don't know. I've just been jamming out to the Madison Square Garden one. It's good too. Recently. So maybe that's That why. one's high energy. Yeah. There's a choir. Yeah. There's everything. The audience is into it. Uh-huh. Everything. No, I love it. That's no, good. I love it. Make it happen. Yes. Well, you can do it. Watch. That's right, honey. Just Misty look at Misty. Copeland. She is it. She's she did the one it. doing it. Uh-huh. I mean, who would have thought, you know, coming up from nothing. Yeah. Living in the motels. Now, listen, that's what I want to talk about. Because during uh-huh. the show, you revealed that you had lived in a hotel at one but point. Did I re- re- was that a reveal moment? I feel like I just I thought I just told people, or you knew at least, or somebody. No, I knew that you had lived with your grandmother. Uh-huh. But I didn't realize it was to get you out of the motel. Well, it was to get me out of the motel, but it was also to get me off the streets because we also lived on the streets, girl. Well, see, I was going to bring it up because I feel like there's a lot of people that live in those situations, motels, in the streets, in the car, and people are ashamed of it. Well, oh, I was ashamed for a very, very long time. But look, you could be that... Uh-huh. And you can still rise up to the top. Absolutely. That's why That's why I was saying, like, when I heard Misty's story about growing up, I was like, hold up, bitch. Mm. That's my story. Uh-huh. Just like, you know, when you hear a song like Looking In and you're like, yeah. oh, that's my story. Right. Like it was for Misty. But I was like, Misty, your story is my story. Right. Except I'm not a ballerina. Uh-huh. But you know what I mean? But yet you're sitting at the table with her. Exactly. And th- You're not stuck in the motel. No, not at all. And that's what it is. It's about breaking that cycle. Mm. And that's why Misty and I think her siblings are all doing very well as well Mm -hmm. um, in their own fields but you know it's very hard to break that cycle of poverty Mm. and just of like you know educating yourself that you're you're able to rise above all of those things and that's what Mariah was for me because my brothers they're not able to break that cycle 
Uh, you know what I mean? So it really does take powerful people like Misty's dance coach uh-huh. or my grandmother or Mariah uh-huh. that has to sort of like tell you that, yes, you can make it happen. Yes, mm. you can do this. Now, how did you end up in the motel? How did that happen? Well, first we were living in the car, girl. How'd you get there? Well, I don't know. I just remember one day. First of all, we moved around all the time. Right. Like we never lived in an uh, apartment or we never had like a a home. Like Mariah, you moved all the time. We just moved all the time. Like, Mm. you know, up until high school, I never went to the same school two years in a row. Really? Yeah. And I believe I was in seventh grade and I went to four schools that year. Uh Uh-huh. But whatever, whatever. Tell um, me the, the home life. Was it mom, dad? It was mom and my little brother's dad. And then sometimes my dad, who's my older brother's dad. So it's like okay. my older brother and I have the same dad and my younger brother has a different dad. But like he's been, he basically was like the main male figure in the home. And then when my dad would come out of jail, <laughs> he would come and live with us. Why was he We're, in jail? Girl. I don't know. Let me tell you. I th- I have no idea because I never really... I was, like, young. I didn't fucking know. But, like, right. I'm pretty sure it was drug-related. Mm. And also, back in the 80s and 90s or something, I think it was a thing to steal hubcaps off of cars. Hub- oh, the tires? The tire Metal thing. Things? Yes. <laughs> and he would sell them. Ah. Uh, and I think that's illegal. Yes. Because I remember one, one day he took, he took <laughs> my brother and I on a run. Oh, and no. he wanted us to steal these things. And I was like, bitch, I can't do this. <laughs> it is like midnight and you have your like kids out there stealing up. Caps with you, bitch, bye. Oh my God. Bitch, bye. Yeah. I don't know. So anyways, so we were living in the some apartment and it was all of us. It was uh, my dad, my little brother's dad, my mom, and, you know, me and my two brothers. So there was, how many people? Is that six people? Hang on. Your me- dad, your mother, uh-huh. you, two brothers. And my little brother's dad. And him? Yes. In the same apartment? Six yes, of us? Yes. When we, when we first went like homeless, there was all six of us living together. together. And so my, How big was the apartment? Probably a two bedroom. So you're sharing the room with all your brothers? Oh, yes, of course. We always shared a room ah. when we had a room. Hmm. Um, okay. So this is what I remember. The one day we were walking home from school, my older brother and I, and we saw our couch sitting on the side of the road oh, no. outside our apartment. And we're like, girl, isn't that our... I I didn't say girl, but... (laughs) In your mind. In my mind. I was like, girl, isn't that our couch? In the... um, In the... Dan Enrique's uh, Baby Lifetime K. drama. Exactly. Oh, what do you like, call it? Lifetime movie. Yeah, the biopic. Yeah, the biopic. Whatever. Yeah. Um, to, I said that to my brother and he's like, yeah, that is our couch. And, you know, us not knowing what's going on. Yeah. We're like, oh my God, let's run upstairs really quick because I bet we got new furniture. Oh no. Bitch, we didn't realize how poor we were until, yeah. you, you know, you grow up a little bit. Until you realize. Because I was thinking, this bit, we got new furniture, girl. Let's go. Yeah. So we jet upstairs. And we can't get in because nobody's home. The door is locked. Oh, and no. we didn't have keys. And so we're like, well, what the heck? What the heck? And then, I don't know, time went by. And then eventually here comes the, the, our car rolled up to the side of the apartment building with everybody in it and all of our stuff. So we got like, mom, dad, other dad. Uh-huh. And my little, little brother, brother. Roll up. And they're like, come on. How big is the car now? Girl, it's just a regular car. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it's a broke down ass car. And so now I'm like, so we're like, well, what happened? Like, what's going on? Yeah. And so we were, they're just like, oh, well, you know, we're, we're going to be living in the car for a while. Or like, you know, I think they like tried to turn it into something fun. And we're like, oh, we're going camping. Uh-huh. And like, we would like just live in a tent. And I'm like, girl, I don't think this is how this is supposed to go. And now... And then, oh. <laughs> well, how were the parents getting along? The three parents. Well, there was always fighting. Right. There was always fighting. So they're always fighting, but it's they're like getting a along. Thruple situation. It was not a thruple situation because my mom and my dad were definitely not. Well, I don't ever recall them being like. They were sticking together. You know, like I don't think they were like romantic uh-huh. at all. I think it was just who knows, girl. Right. I wasn't. I don't. You weren't checking. I never him. even thought that but i don't think it was a thruple thing they were all. just sticking together yeah now was it a drug situation oh of course all three oh, of them all three of them um and alcohol and the fights and everything ah uh-huh. yeah so you and your siblings would see them high on drugs oh yeah uh-huh oh did you know that was going on 
Uh, yeah. Do you know what it was? I, you know what I really thought? I thought it was just like smoking pot. Oh. But no, it was, it was more than that. Uh-huh. But I don't think I really realized that until maybe I was like a teenager or something. Really? And then I was like, oh, this is what was going on when uh-huh. it, everything was younger. When you're older. So it took me a little while to like really figure it out. So they kind of shielded you from it? The severity uh, no, of it. No, I think I shielded myself from it. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like, I would always just, like, you know, hide in the bedroom when, like, they were, like, out in the living room, like, partying or having their friends over or whatever they were doing. Yeah. So I was just, like, sort of, like, away. Uh-huh. But it was, because we had, like, um, my mom's good friend. She had kids our age as well. So, like, the, the friends would come over. We, uh, we would all be running out playing, mm. you know, doing something. hmm so that's when we were then. So we're homeless and we're doing all these things. Was the friend blah. doing drugs too? Oh yeah, for sure. So for this sure. is what, this is what America looks like in the drug epidemic. Yeah, oh, it's, it's like it's, 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 it's neighborhoods doing drugs together. Yeah, it's oh, not yeah. like the one well, person you know, in the street. I, you know, when I I allegedly I don't know, but like I think when you you know when you're buying drugs from people, like you're in that like community. Right. So it's just, everybody just does everything together. Which makes it difficult if to get out of it. Right. You're because surrounded you only by know it. from every angle you look, right. that's all you see. That's all you know. You think that's just how everybody yeah, lives. What life is like. And it's completely not. And, you, and there's children in it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So interesting. And so sort of like what happened with Misty and her coach is what like my grandmother did. So she was like, first of all, I mean, I don't know, but I think I was my grandmother's favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. She's like, let me save this one. Because she was, she could see something and she was just like, you know, Danny's, co- they all call me Danny because that was my name growing up. But um, she's like, Danny's coming to live with me. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? And yeah. my grandmother had like, she was going through breast cancer and all these things. So she's severely sick. Uh-huh. But she's like, you're coming to live with me. So I went and my mom and brothers did come and live for like a couple of weeks there. Yeah. But then she's like, no, y'all are crazy. Get the fuck out of my house. Uh-huh. Like, I'm sick. I don't have time for all your nonsense and your bullshit. Yeah. She's like, but Danny's staying. Uh-huh. Um, so that's when I stayed. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, wait a minute. I can I can eat, like, whenever mm. I want? Mm. Well, girl, you got food up in here? Wow. I mean, I always yeah. knew my grandma had food because when we would go over, she would just, like, shower us with everything. But, like... Just to be picked up from school Mm. and, like, brought home and, like, hey, sit down and have a snack. And, hey, let's work on your homework together. Like, that just wasn't thing. Like, to be, like, oh, it's time for bed. You know, here's some hot chocolate. I'm going to tuck you in and, you know, uh, good night. Say good night. Yeah. Here's some pajamas. Uh Girl, I think until I lived with my grandmother, I literally slept in my clothes that I wore that day. Really? Like, I just didn't know that pajamas were a thing. Like, I thought they were just like, oh, that's for rich people. Really? To change into pajamas before you go to bed. Yeah. I was like, this shit blew my mind, girl. Wow. Yeah. And then my grandmother passed away. Yeah. And I had to go back and live with my mom. And I was like, I'm not doing this shit. Mm-hmm. So as soon as I turned 16, I moved the fuck out. Mm. Bitch, I got a car. Mm-hmm. I got a job. And I was going to school. And I was like, bye, bitch. So you ended up in the motel? No, we were in the motel and out of the motel. And then I ended up with my grandmother. And when I moved back with my mom, we were living in like a broke down trailer. In like literally like the poorest fucking town you could imagine. And that's why I was like, girl, I'm not doing this. Mm -hmm. I cannot do this. Mm. So that's when, by the time I turned 16, I got a car. Mm. I got a job. I was working up at the Target, girl. Yeah. Yes. Stealing every Mariah magazine I could. (laughs) (laughs) And then, so yeah, when I moved back, we weren't, my mom was living in a a trailer, not a motel by then. She had gotten her life semi together. Uh Uh-huh. But it was still bad. Yeah. The same shit was happening. Yeah. So it was just like, okay, I, I have to leave. Right. You know? So yeah. I have to just get away. And that's how I did it. And then, of course, just being educated and going to college and just wanting something better for yourself. Yeah. Obviously, my grandmother showed me that that sort of, that life exists. Right. So that's, I was that's like. the avenue out. Right. Like school, education, you mm. know, like dressing nice, looking nice, being nice. Mm. Um, and of course, obviously all the inspiration for Mariah. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, well, I, this is what I have to do. Cause I can't stay there. Mm. So yeah, that's why I was like, Misty girl, we're girls, girl. Yeah. <laughs> well, so interesting. Cause my parents grew up in poverty, both of them in different countries. My father's from New Zealand mm-hmm. and my mother's from Peru, which is like third world poverty. Right. Whole other thing. 
there's no like government resources or, or help. Mm-hmm. It's like there's nothing. You're on your own. Mentally, it's hard to survive that because my oh, parents mentally, my parents did not survive it. They're right now. They're on a major timeout with me because they're just their mind is going really badly. Well, try, they're probably getting all the PTSD is coming up from all those rough times. All of it, but to the point where it's been like decades. I've been saying you need to go to therapy. I forced my dad into therapy. Mm-hmm. He kind of like resisted it. And then the therapist was like, I really don't think we should like wake him up because he'll realize what he missed. Oh. Like it's really bad. And my mother's like really losing her mind to the point where I, I was just in Australia. I had to call an ambulance. Girl. Because she was just lo- like flipping out over nothing. She's pushing her ice cream cart. Pushing the ice cream cart. So I had to call the ambulance. Yes, girl. Yes. <laughs> just like Mariah's mother had to. Yeah, but again, but then she like manipulates the story. Like she goes around telling people I'm on drugs. It's I'm oh. the one. I'm the one doing it oh, all. Oh, girl. So I'm like, okay, do you know what? We need to stop everything right now. And we're not talking right now. Oh my gosh, yeah. Major time out. Oh, that's not cute. Yeah. And then my dad emailed me and tried to blame me for everything. And I was Girl, like, why are they tabloiding you? Tabloiding, but I pulled my thank God for Oprah and Mariah. Yes. Because I pulled that out. I will not accept any of this. Uh, none of no ma'am. Yes. No. It ma'am. was not me. No, it was not. Yeah. You're I, doing the best you can to help. Yeah. Oh my gosh. They're making it worse. Girl, that is scandalation. Totally. But it shows you how Poverty can really fuck people up. Yeah. Even if you get out of it. Even if you get out of it, there's still that thing, like, you know, this, that cycle still exists with th- these people yeah. who are your family members. Yeah. I, I think I was just lucky enough that, like, since I was able to pull myself out of the poverty, my family always looked at me like, oh, my God, like, you're so great. They thought I was, like, the, the living angel uh-huh. because they're like, I can't believe you did this. Yeah. Um. So... I never had them like be angry or mad at me because they were just all so in love with me because they're like, oh, you made it. You made it. Yeah, right. You know? mm-hmm. So, whatever. But that's why it's important that Mariah is around and yes. Oprah and Honey, people Honey, I tell you, I don't you. know where I would be or what I would be doing. Me either. It's absolutely the truth. Yeah. Like, because without that, what would I have had? Nothing. Well, yeah, Oprah raised me. The Oprah I show yeah. totally raised me because oh. my parents were checked out oh, for mentally. Sure. They, did, they were doing the, um, this is the, like the... Ma- the modernity kind of uh, lifestyle that where you have the wife and the husband and the husband goes to work and you have the two kids okay, and they yeah. go to college and uh-huh. then they become lawyers. Anything outside of that narrative freaked them the fuck out. Oh, really? Yeah, and they couldn't handle because much. Because they were probably getting, you know, yeah. all the PTSD from like, right. no, it has to be this way. That they had to be very yeah. stri- strict. But oh, strict girl. is, a.k.a. means... Um, Suppressing True Okay I see that Like forcing well, Especially the gay kid Oh well of course I didn't want to go to No sports <laughs> <laughs> No we're not doing football Right We're not yeah. doing Any of that No No ma'am Oh no, my dad ma'am. took me not to cricket all. Class or whatever it's called Go I wanted to die No It's like the most boring sport in the world That's where they hit the ball With a stick It's like baseball but rearranged Oh, I don't know. It's the same stick ball run. Oh, they have a big long stick. Yeah. Okay. There's sticks, there's a ball, and you gotta run. <laughs> That's all I know. That's all there is. Oh gosh. And no, count. No, no. Well, yeah, I'll tell you though, because I remember uh, if you watched the documentary for Misty, she was like, um, she did not want to go to that first ballet class because she's mm. like, oh, I don't know, like anything. And mm-hmm. I, you know, I'm wearing like all these like wrong clothes and blah, mm. blah, blah. But like, if you just do it, you see what yeah. what what it can become, but yeah. no, the sports wasn't happening though. Uh-uh. Oh, no, 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 yeah, yeah, no, not no. that. <laughs> I would have preferred a dance class. I would have been down for that. It could have been good, maybe sewing, a knitting, piano class, maybe something, something like that. Yeah, that could have worked. But that falls outside <clears throat> of the narrative that my parents had. Oh, of course, yeah. And the they men don't do and that. They weren't going to you know stray from that like, exactly because that's, Cause that's this, is, this is the story. Yeah, yeah. No, I get it. It happens. That's why, here's the other thing. I can't wait to read Mariah's memoir. Yeah. Can you believe it? Well, again, Because uh, these, yes. I think, are going to be the stories that she's going to say. Well, because there is that thing. Like, if you did come from a house that wasn't mom, dad, dad has a good job, mom's the homemaker and has the perfect home and cooks every meal. Right. And she's a good cook and the parent, kids turn out perfect. If you don't have that story, there's a shame mm-hmm. that's applied. So when you do move around a lot... 
there's a shame to that. And I think Mariah felt that too. Oh, I'm sure. And hasn't told the whole story. Yeah. She's left the worst unsaid. Uh, hello. Mm. I, we know that why we're waiting for it. And I think she actually even tweeted um, the other day. I should have pulled it up, but I didn't know we were going down the memory lane here. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, but notes. somebody, somebody uh, tweeted her, hey, like, how's the memoir coming along? And yeah. she was like, I'm working on it every day. So like, yeah. and that was just this week she tweeted that. So I was like, oh my God, like we're going to get it. We're going to get, hopefully we're going to get these stories. Cause otherwise yeah. I just feel like it could be missing a lot of what we relate to with her. Right. Well, I th- you know, I think it's just important to tell those early stories, even if you think there's shame in it. Cause really right. when you your prima ballerina, the first ever black prima ballerina, who cares where you came from? Exactly. It almost it it makes it more actually, interesting. It shows how strong you are. And more va- like. And, the work the, you you deserve to be there, right? You put in more work. Exactly, exactly. No, I, I think I was ashamed for it for many years, and I never, I would never tell anybody, and I acted mm. like, oh, you know, my family's perfect, everything's yeah. fine, and or I would just never talk about it. Right. It, literally, probably until I was like in my late twenties or thirties, yeah. early thirties. Yeah. No, no, you can't talk about that. Yeah. Girl. No, my no. father's the same way. Like he wants this to all be quiet. He doesn't want anybody knowing about it. He's so mad because I told the whole family. Oh. <laughs> Shit, like girl, the no whole family. They're tabloiding you. I know. But I was like, oh, because he <laughs> wants you to, have to, to do it. No, but I'm like, fuck that. It's not working. Yeah. So I'm telling everybody. Yeah. I told it, and yeah. now I'm telling you. Honey, it's out. <laughs> Hi, honey, I forgot we're recording. <laughs> no, but like the shame is there. Like it's so much yeah. shame, and, and when you realize no that, to, well, like, you know I mean? like breaking down a barrier when you push on the shame it does it pops. Right. You just realize that it's nothing. It doesn't like, do it's anything. Just a, a, a it wasn't mind real. structure that you have. Like it doesn't exist. Yeah. So or it goes. Right. When you push through it. Right. It's gone. It's gone. That's how, and that's how you got to do it. That's how you persevere. That's yeah. how you become the Mariah Carey's, the Misty Copeland's, the Mariah Reporters. Right. <laughs> well, just to circle back to Mariah's book, I want all the details in those early years because there's nothing to be ashamed of. No. You're I Mariah agree. Carey. Yeah. You did Look it. Look how far you've come. Yeah. You've made it. Look how strong you are. But the, that tail end of the story, the back end, is also important. Mm-hmm. No, it is. It has the whole, it's the whole thing. You need yeah. the beginning, the middle, and the end. And there are people in that that need to hear it that you can get out of it. Mm-hmm. You know, Allison, allegedly. <laughs> oh, Allison. We love Allison. We wish Always well. have a soft spot for so, Allison. You know, we, we do. Okay. But uh, we now, we get, can we get into Mariah moments? Oh, now yeah. Now that we've talked an hour of therapy? I think we've got to change our name <laughs> to um, the Mariah Report, dot, 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 uh, Misty. And yeah. some Misty. And some Misty. <laughs> yeah. And some Misty moments. Um, okay, Mariah. Okay, so what has been going on in Mariah Land? We got the Anono video. That's the big thing. And the remix. Yep. So where should we start? The video. Okay, let's start with the good. I like it. I like it. It's cute. It's like low, I don't want to say low budget, but like... It's a simple setup. Simple setup, but effective. Yes. Uh Uh-huh. It it, it matches the caution vibe. Yes. It matches the vibe of the song. Uh-huh. It is... Mariah, th- like New York subway mm-hmm, station, mm-hmm. subway train ish. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. The Basically, the oh, this is directed by Sarah M- McCall- McCaughlin. I want to say McLaughlin, but I think it's McCaughlin. McCaughlin, yes. McLaughlin. McCaughlin. Same girl, same woman who did she's the doing all other videos. two videos. Yeah. So she's go- it's great. I love yes. it. I love that they're sticking with her because you see the style uh-huh. through the three videos. And we like that. It's cohesive. Through that through line. Yes. It's caution era. It is. She's on, on brand. Very on brand. Very on point. Looking good. Yeah. Feeling good. And, and gorgeous. Yeah. Gorgeous. And probably, you know, third video in, less budget. She's still making it work. Yeah, I think, well, I mean, here's the thing. I don't know what a budget of a video like that would be, but even GTFO is very low budget. I mean, she's just walking around a house. True, but it's very stylized. It is, and but that's what we like about it. Yeah. And that, that works. Mm-hmm. You, you don't have to be with all these things. Not everything has to have a story to it mm-hmm. because Mariah's telling the story. The visual is Mariah. Yeah. You know? This one does have um, extra people. It has all these dancers. It has them babies, well, them a lot kids. Of, yeah, the dancers are actually like influencers. Right. They're like big people. Social media people. Social media things. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know any of them because I don't have time, but... The only one I know is um, the tattooed guy, Rusty Rooftop. Oh, I don't know him. Tell me more. He's like a skater boy. Me and my friend Jarris used to follow him. Really? Ages ago. Oh, interesting. And then he popped up in the video. Oh. I can't, I couldn't place any, not a single like one a, of those people. It's but like an LA scene. Yeah. Of people. I could see that. 
Well, it was it's still good. There, so it, it, no, good. it's good. Yeah, it, it is really good. The the whole art direction, the lighting, mm-hmm. the editing was pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I liked that there was like different types of styles of editing going on there. Same. Um, I, I I like it. I watch it. Two dozen times right away mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because I was like, this is totally watchable. The outfits are good. Oh, girl, the costumes are okay. Now, hold on a minute. Wait, yeah. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, and she gave us like, boy, I need you vibes. Oh, yes, I can see that. You know I, mean? I can see those, that. Like, sort of like shots. a more like a, uh, an updated version uh-huh. of sort of that. No, I'm totally down for that. I was, I wanted to talk about there was some sort of a ponytail scandal. The picture, the teaser pictures, there was a scandal. Uh-huh. Why? I I missed out why there was... All the Lamely was going crazy. No, because she released like two teaser pictures or they leaked or something. No, I think she uh, was She put them out. Them, yeah. One's a back shot, one's a front shot. The front shot has laid hair flat uh-huh. over her shoulders and everything. The same like looking shot from the back has a ponytail. So it looks like two consec... Like they're together, but not. Oh, I still don't get why that's The problem, problem. is <laughs> the ponytail had the kitchen hanging out. Okay. But that was a different color. Okay. So everyone's like, well, who was that? That could be a scandalation. That was the scandal. That could be a scandalation. Yeah. Because it wasn't an ombre. It was like a full kitchen hanging out. But for me, okay, well, you know, don't put a wig in a ponytail. Yes. Um, <laughs> the lesson to the be learned. The lesson to be learned. But I, honestly, I liked everything that was going on. That I that didn't even like pop up in my mind. No, when you watch the video, you, it... You lose it that. Like it, yeah. I, it's still, it's just because I she still put two pictures out, side by side. Well, well, is she not allowed to have more than one look? What's the it was scandal? the same because it was the same dress. It was the same like moment. It was almost like a front shot, back shot of and, the same. Okay, I see. Moment. Okay, yeah. Girl, I mean? please. y'all need to calm down. It wasn't me. No, okay, no, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do it. Okay, but people were in a frenzy because they thought, "Oh, is that Cardi B? Is that Lil Kim? Like, oh, who is that? Okay. okay, is this the remake? Making a little bit more sense. Yeah. But anyways, okay. So the video is. I'm. I'm giving it a thumbs Mariah. up. I'm. It, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I'm giving it a thumbs up. I like it. I can watch it. Yeah. I, here's the thing. I love the song. The song Same. is so good. No, I love the song. So I can watch that video. Like yeah. it's not it's not bad in any way. That's gonna look good in the club on the uh, screen. Oh honey, I cannot wait. Stylized <gasps> like that. Yes. Yeah. That's cute. That is cute. Okay, now we can talk about the ensembles. In the video. In the video. Yeah. Yeah, we're not talking twerk ensemble. No. 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 Well, that's part of the Well uh, we're gonna lead to that. Because he, I like the, the the dresses with like the plasticky shimmery shells. Shimmery, whatever all that, of that is. Yeah. Sequency things. Sequence. But I'm like can we dig that up and throw that on stage real quick? It's an emergency. Why isn't she wearing that? Yeah, that would look in good. The caution tour on stage. Yeah, like that would look amazing. All I know. the dresses that she wore, she wore had like two or three different dresses. Yeah, everything on her, her from her hair to her makeup oh, to yeah. a, the dresses is all on brand I for know. the caution era. Tour, yeah. Tour, well, yes, including the tour. No, that's what I mean. Like the dress, I feel like the dresses on the stage are not on brand. No, with the caution vibe. Because don't get me started, Martin. The dresses on stage are not her best. Mm, I know. And I don't understand how that slipped through the cracks. I know. I know. Because the guy who styled this, um, Jason Wuchek, yeah, he, he styled the video. He's also styling the tour. I know. I don't know. So what's going how on. does that? Like what? Happened. I don't know what happened. I don't know. That's all. That's my question: is what happened? Well, we're gonna have to open an investigation. I think I'm calling the police now. Yes, <laughs> I absolutely am because this just doesn't make any sense. I know. I know. Um, because I think what she's wearing in the uh, no no video is spot on. Yeah, love it. So, um, the <laughs> so do you remember the second New Year's Eve, the good one? Yes, the redemption. The redemption performance. Uh-huh. Those earrings she's wearing is by this guy. Um, the comp- the brand is called House of Emmanuel, and oh, I know him. Yes, yes, from Australia. From yes, Australia, he, he lives around the corner from me. Around the corner, he knows me since I was uh-huh. a baby. He does the hair clip in the I know no video. Oh, that little hair piece, the hair jewel. Oh, that's his. Oh, I love it. Yeah, look at that. My little suburban neighborhood. Can you? Uh, you've hit <laughs> the big here. time now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a lot comes out of there. It does. <laughs> Okay, but now the other thing that we get from the video mm. are these brand new added high notes. I know. I was gagged. I love them. 
No, me too. Gagged and loved them. Because now, because now I have to go to the video to get something right. New. I have to watch the video for to it. get that. Mm-hmm. But then I was thinking, is she shading Ariana low key? Because you know Ariana tried the high note, yes, as if and people were acting like she invented it, right? She could be. I'm like, like I don't know Ariana. Come on, these are mine. Like these are, bitch. I know high notes now. Yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> like let me show you how to sing high, honey. Uh-huh. Because what I, if you listen closely, what I think Mariah isn't just hitting out a high note; she's saying a no no uh-huh. as in a high note. Right. If you listen closely, I think. So don't don't come up to me 15 years from now and say, oh, she's singing a no-no oh, in like, the high notes. Like the Lover like, Boy? Her, yeah, I knew she was singing Hurry Babe uh-huh. in Lover Boy. I knew that in 2001, girl. <laughs> so don't come at me in 15 years talking about she's singing a no-no in high notes, bitch. Uh-huh. So I will get real irate. <laughs> but I love it. I think it adds that perfect little something. Well, let's, the, let's what do you guys think listening? Is she singing a a no-no in high notes? Tell us. I, I dare somebody to tell me. <laughs> tell you no? <laughs> tell me no. <laughs> she is. I, she, if you listen closely, I think. Probably. You might have to, you might have to find like an isolated uh, vocal track or something to really hear it because uh, she's, there's so much going on in that part where the high notes come. Yeah. But anyways, it's just, it's it is good, what though. it is. I'm, it's not that serious, but I like them. Because everyone was like, this is not on the album. Right. And it gives you a little... Oomph. Oomph. Something different. Yeah. yeah. No, I like that. I like how she like decided to do that. I don't need those high notes because I still love the album version. Yeah. I, you know what I mean? Right. But they add something a little extra. Mm-hmm. But they're not needed. Mm. But I see wh- why she did that. Well, they are also part of the remix that came out. The long-awaited remix. Oh, I don't think the high notes are on the remix. Are they not in there? No, they're not in there. In the video? There's no remix video. Yeah, girl. No, there isn't. With the audio. Yes, there is. Oh, oh. There is. Okay. Uh, There is an audio video, not a music video. What did I... I I got it on YouTube, so I don't know what I was watching. You could have been watching a fan made something. I was tuned out. Because I'm like, what the fuck is this? (laughs) I don't think there's a remix video. I think there might be one coming, though. Because well, yeah, they would have filmed it all together. Yeah, they filmed it all together because if you look at the one dress that, with the black coat where she sit, like she's like, mm. it's, it's basically the cover for the Anono remix. Yeah. That cover from iTunes or Spotify, wherever you listen to it at, um, that cover, that dress she's wearing, that's what's going to be the main dress of the remix video. I can just mm. guess. Mm-hmm. That's in my mind. Mm-hmm. With those when, sh- with metal those shoes. Metal shoes and whatever. The mesh shoes. Mesh. Mesh. <laughs> Um, Which I liked. No, that I was liked a good the, look. Honey, I love the whole look. Yeah. The only thing is, I wish there was no jackets because if it's going to be a summer situation, the video is very wintry. Okay, that's my only complaint. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? We're we're gonna minor, we're gonna minor. survive. Yeah, you know? minor. We're gonna survive. Um, but it was a cold day. Remember? Yes. When they filmed it, of course, in LA. Yeah. Inside. Yes. A warehouse. <laughs> There's no heating space heater available. No, 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 no. no. That's, sometimes it's like that on the MTA, girl. <laughs> yeah. Sure is. So I'll tell you about riding the train. Okay, so the, uh, the high notes are there. We love them. Now, then she released the remix. Mm. And the lamb Twitter went crazy mm-hmm. because it's not what we were expecting mm-hmm. um, or anticipating or thinking or hoping or wishing and dreaming. Mm. It, it, okay, and here's the other thing. When Stefan Don, whatever this bitch's name is, I don't know her. Yeah. W- when she posted that Instagram video mm. of her, like, in the studio with a no-no playing mm. and saying, oh, she's doing something, I could swear to you that somebody in Mariah's camp tweeted she will not be on the remix. Right. So They're keeping it. So, okay, so, like, why not say nothing? Because now I feel like, okay, now I know that you're lying, lying to hide things. Yeah. Like, I get why you have to do that. Uh-huh. But like, just don't say anything. Yeah, ignore it. Yeah. Like, just, you know, anyways. No, I know. I, I, the, the remix is what it is. I'm sure somebody out there likes it. She, to me, it's, it's pointless. She has, Stefan Don has her own crowd. She's a big YouTube sensation. Right. Huge numbers on YouTube. G- good for her? Um, I'm happy for her. Well, I feel like when you look at the strategy of everything that's happened, like the rebuilding of Mariah's career, they've got influencers um, in the video. They've okay. got okay. they've got Stefan, who's like a YouTube star, pretty much on the remix. 
okay. catching her crowd. We're okay. probably going to get more remixes with other people. I would, I would hope so. Like they're they're going to fan it out. You know, like we're going to talk with our um, guest in a little bit after the splash break, and we're going to talk remixes because mm. Mariah is the queen of remixes. Well, yeah, I think that's why people were disappointed because it wasn't like a remix. Right. It, it was, was a, a copy and paste. And, a cut and paste. They just added her where yeah. like... When you want a remix, Mariah knows how to do a remix where it's new vocals, it's new words, it's new right. beats, uh-huh. it's new everything. A new sound. A new sound. Yeah. So I hope that something like that still comes from the a no no. Again, this just went to radio. This video was just released. Mm. It's really early on in the life of a no no. I know, but it's just odd that it's, Lambs are so upset by the whole situation of it all. Yeah, but here's the thing this is our first time out. Um, you know, in an, in a new era outside of the nightmare era, and there were so many missed opportunities in the nightmare era yeah. that I think a lot of lambs just want to um, you know capitalize on all the opportunity that's there for Mariah. Mm. And you know, having Cardi B, I mean, that's an instant hit. Yeah, just you know, of because who she is. I mean, I don't. I actually never listened to her whole album, but I like Cardi B like guesting on that Maroon Five song. Yeah, or that Tatiana song. You heard that song, Tatiana. Thot- Tatiana, something like Buzz like Tatiana or something like that. But she, she be talking real dirty in there. Well, the thing is, like Cardi B is like a Rihanna to me. I'm I'm not. I don't have her album. I'm not playing her at home. But just being out and about, I'm You're learning hearing, the songs yeah, exactly, exactly. And I know it's her now. No, it's the same. And I'm learning the words. Yeah. And mm-hmm. no, but like that's why I think lambs are just disappointed but you never know maybe something will be coming in the future yeah it's you know the song just came out the album just came out this is technically only the second single yeah there's still things to come well look at stuff look at um the despacito debacle Uh oh uh-huh uh-huh now these days you put the album version out this remix that remix that person over here you can have you have more than one remix that counts exactly it's all you do it differently. Doing it. Yeah, so, there's just a different strategy. Yeah, we're probably getting more remixes. And you know, you know, in the life of a lamb, we're always analyzing every move that's made and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So you know, but that's just all in our head. Well, I think because Mariah kind of fell off the trend wagon for a long time, nightmare era, pre nightmare era. We're not used to seeing this strategy unfold. Right. But it's a new day in music. But this is what you got to do. This is how everybody does it. Yeah. You know, and some people, you know, are just more popular right now. Mm-hmm. So it's either way. The, the remix as a whole, to me, doesn't really add anything to it. The high notes Same. were a better surprise yeah. than this particular remix. Yeah. So, you know, I've listened to it a couple times. I bought it. Stefan's good, but it's just it's not, not bad. It's not a wow. It's not wow. That, to me, it just doesn't heighten it in any way. Right. You know? But What whatever. kind of annoyed me, though, um, with the lambs is that they were freaking out. They're like, who is this rapper? Like, we don't know who she is. Like, what the fuck is this? Where's Cardi B and Missy and blah, blah, blah. But then I was like, well, why was it okay when ODB was the random rapper? Right. And nobody, you know, not nobody knew him, but like. Pop the culture. pop culture did not know him. It's the same thing. Yeah, give her a chance. Same, Relax. Give her a chance. It could catch on yeah. somewhere yeah. along the line. Right. You never know. It's just I don't know her, and I, I, there's you know who, after listening to the remix, I was like you know who I think would have maybe been a good um, person to have on is that Lizzo girl. Lizzo. Lizzo. Yeah, yeah. She does that. You, uh, she got. She, she got that like, sound. Yeah, she has like. I think like she could have thrown a nice verse on there. Yeah. And you know she also can sort of like sing, so it doesn't just have to be like a rap. Like, mm-hmm. and she's up and coming. Like she's real big right now. Mm-hmm. So um, she would have been like a nice like you know combo. A moment. A feature. But we'll see, we'll see other than that, I was like, this remix does nothing for me. I'll li- I'll rather listen to the album version, honestly. Same. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, because the album version is classic. Well, JD was on his Instagram live, like, scrambling. Yeah, I saw that he did that, but I couldn't watch because I was like, People I don't were have coming time. for him. What like, are they saying? What the fuck is the, like, where the, fuck <laughs> is the remix? And then they'll call him a liar. And he's like, why are you calling me liars? And he's like, you saw the tweet with Missy. You saw the tweet with uh, whatever. Like, yeah, I wasn't lying. <laughs> we saw that. Yes, we saw the tweets. So where's the product? I know, but Loki, I was like, JD, we spoke about this already. We can be friends. But don't get crazy. Because I think so, I don't. Yeah, and it, that remix. Uh-huh. You basically gave us the I don't remix. Oh, my God. Remember that with what's her name? 
They yeah. oh, they were really trying to jump on the bandwagon with Remy Ma. Yeah. Oh Lord. That was Gremlin. Oh, of pushing course. that. Of course. And it did not work. Why well, was Remy involved? Because she was fighting with Nikki. Right? Yeah. So she was having a big moment with the Nikki and everything. Back then. So it's just like throw literally like throw this woman on here and girl, please. But still, look what JD did because JD's not on the album. So look what he gives us and. Mm. Uh, Remember, and then there was that time when he was in the studio talking about he's working on drum beats for a new Mariah remix. Yeah. Where's that? Maybe that was it. Uh, girl, you've trained my ears to listen better because I didn't hear nothing new in terms of track production. Well, let's see. There could be something more coming. Mariah's the queen of remixes. Yeah. We're going to give her a pass on this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and after the lip sync battle debacle <clears throat> with JD? Oh, that's right. He's in trouble. He is. Uh, he is on our um, time out list. Side eye list. Side, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're definitely side eyeing him right now. <laughs> like, girl, what? Yeah, the lip sync battle. Yeah. Oh God, no. Oh my gosh, that was bad. You know what else is bad is that damn RuPaul thing. RuPaul. And, uh, we're yes. talking about that. We're going to talk about up. that with our guest actually. But before um, we bring him on, we're going to take. Uh, we're going to talk one more thing, and then we're going to take a splash break. Um, Because the other big exciting news that happened in Mariah World is that on the uh, date of the Chicago Caution Tour, the tour book was there. Was it Chicago or Atlanta? It was Chicago. Chicago? Oh, yeah, it was Chicago. Yeah, because my girl Terry was there, and she immediately snapped all the damn pictures and sent me a video of her flipping through the book. Oh, that's right. And I'm sorry to loud you out, uh, Terry, but (laughs) she was turning the pages, and you could hear her gasp, and she was like... (laughs) (laughs) Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> just all by herself. <laughs> and that's I'm like, that's what have, that would have been me too, girl. But that's why it's important to have a good tour book with good pictures because people want to gasp when yes. they turn the page. They want to be like, oh, ooh, yeah. you know what I mean? And it was, I was just cracking up, but I love that she sent me a video of every page. She, she got just, a real time reaction. Yes, absolutely. So <laughs> I loved it. Book. Thank you, girl. Um, but the tour book is good. Good. Finally. Really good. Yeah. I mean, there. I of course would have made a couple of other changes because I don't like collage pages in tour books. But I will take this one. Well, I'll take them because they're diff- they're not like Instagram pictures. True, mostly exactly new. But the only other thing is um, those are the 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 collage page of her like rehearsing. That's for the butterfly returns. Because that's in the Vegas set. It's yes. not the caution. Yes, but, yes. That's just nitpicking. It's fine. It's, uh, uh, yeah. Honey, all the pictures are new gorgeous. pictures. They're new pictures. Yeah. There's a lot of new pictures. There's good and ones. I love them. Yeah. Love them. There was one that was like butterfly-ish. And I was like, why wasn't that the memoirs butterfly right. redo? The, the three. Yes, um, yes, yes. The three. And there's butterflies flying around. That was How a good look. gorgeous. Good look. So good. The dress is so good. The yeah. hair is so good. The makeup is so good. Everything's the, good. It's a good everything book. Everything is good. The whole book is good. Mm-hmm. All the new pictures we got. The cover is good. <gasps> the cover is the good. The paper looks good. Yes. It looks like it got a little gloss to yeah. it. Yeah. Uh-huh. <sighs> Big. I, I just wish w- it got there earlier I, for the true, other people. True, but what Mariah did, um, she did, uh, just today or whatever, she um, put it online on her online store, so you can oh, purchase it online. Well, that's smart because the people like me, back in the rainbow days, not in the country, who wants the book? Yeah, just for the look. You can, yeah, of course, because everybody yeah. wants it. I got I mean, my rainbow honey, tour book. Yeah, I didn't go. No, because everybody wants a tour book. Yeah, that's, when they're good, they're good. Yeah. Um, so I'm glad she's doing that, especially because if I was one of those lambs that went to like one of the first shows and wasn't there and I'm now Mad. not able to buy it, I'll be furious, well, I'd be furious, I'd be furious. Yeah. So, um, you can definitely get one, um, because there were, this is how we love the lamely as well, because there were lambs that were buying books for other lambs to like mail to them because mm-hmm. they were like, Oh, I already missed it from my show or I'm not going to this tour, mm-hmm. but now you can buy them online. Yeah. But like, shout out to all the lambs that were helping the other lambs. The lambs are doing the most. Always the most. Always complaining the most. and helping. Complaining, <laughs> nitpicking, <laughs> helping, loving, yet purchasing, and purchasing, yeah. <laughs> and that's the most important thing. Are you purchasing <laughs> and streaming <laughs> and streaming? Although purchasing counts more, so I suggest you purchase. Yeah. So, girl, it's a dollar, girl, for a song. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so I love the tour book. Yeah. Anything else that's been going on in the caution uh, before we break? She took um portrait off. She did. She for did. a couple. 
Put that back on. Put that back on, ma'am. Excuse me. Bang, bang, bang on your door. Excuse me, ma'am. Bring, bring customer service. Hello. Hello. You can't take out portrait. You take out touch my buddy. That's what she's you take out. She's next to go. Yeah. She's the one on the chopping block. Yeah. Not, not po- portrait. She just got here. Honey, we just <laughs> met the bitch. Yeah. She's good. Let us stay. I think, although I, maybe why she cut it out, because it might be emotional for her to sing, because I remember at one show, um, maybe the first show, she started singing it, and like people were cheering, and then Mariah sort of like was like, don't cheer, because I'm going to start crying. Did you but see that video? No, but what about when she cried singing Looking In in Central Park? It's part of the show. Right. You, but you know when she unless was Unless she's cry- like crying every time. <laughs> unless she was crying like she did on the Rainbow Tour for Petals. Uh-huh. Uh, like, okay, girl. Um, <laughs> Acting lessons. No, I, but I, I no, she needs to bring Portrait back. Yeah. And, um, for that matter, bring Looking In, In, uh-huh. <laughs> and My Saving Grace. Yeah. What the heck? And we're going to fire Heartbreaker and Touch My Body. Yes. No, we're not firing them. They're just going to <laughs> rotate out. Yeah. You'll be back. You know, like they do Another with the time. baseball players. Yes. Basketball That's players. Right. We went through this. Yeah. Take the bench. They're, 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 they're fine. They just need a rest. I know. That's it. Um, because, yeah, looking in and saving grace needs, they're, they're, they need a justice. They need. Hashtag yeah, they justice. need a moment. They need to come out and uh, see the sunlight. Mm. Okay. Uh, oh, the other thing. Oh, we, did we already talk about the green dress? No. No? Oh. We don't need to. We don't need to. She was trying to be <laughs> festive for St. Patrick's Day. So she switched out the red dress that she wears. Which red dress? Um, the middle, the one in like the um, Marilyn one. No, yeah, 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 that one. Ah, that one that she sings um, uh, "Vision of Love" and mm-hmm. um, supposed to be singing "Portrait" in it. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. That dress. I was like, girl, mm. girl. All right, time <laughs> for a splash break. <laughs> All right, stick around. Coming up is DJ Bright Light, Bright Light. He's throwing a Mariah party here at Club Coming. So. And it is going to be so much fun. Y'all better yeah. stay tuned and y'all better show up and show out because it's Mariah. It's like a lamb's dream. Oh, yes, because you can request Mariah songs on a post-it note. I know. You don't like, have to beg. Get out. You don't. Because you be getting nervous sometimes going up to those DJs because you know they're going to curse you out. And just not play it. Yeah, but like how, how did... You know, there have been bars where like... Oh, definitely I've been to a couple bars in Chicago or like even here in New York. The DJs hate the, it. The DJs they hate don't. it. But even if they have like, you know, the, nowadays they have those like ju- jukeboxes on the uh-huh. wall. Yeah. There will, like the people will put like notes on there. No Mariah Carey. What? Don't play Mariah Carey. Yes. You've never seen that? No. Oh, honey. I just saw somebody post about it like on Instagram or something. Like they took a picture of the, the jukebox. Shut up. With saying no Mariah, no Britney or whatever, like a slew of the divas. Oh, where was this? Oh, a girl, I don't know. I can't, you know, I can't pay attention. But it was somewhere. Uh. Yeah, it happens. And I've seen it as well at places. In New York City? I think so. I yes. have never. Girl, yes, I've seen it. I would have been outraged. Oh, I would have. Oh, honey, I would burn the place down. How yes. dare you? You can't. How are you going to have a, a jukebox where anyone can play anything and then you're going to have like a rule? Yeah. I almost want to say that it's Ninth Avenue Saloon that I saw that. No, 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 because I've, I've been there. I've been there too, and I put Mar- Mariah, I put on, Mariah on, on the jukebox. But I'm just because I'm now I'm trying to like re- maybe maybe it was like what's that Boots and Saddles? I hate that uh, place. The, the country bar. Yeah, maybe I've seen it there. I don't know because I'm now I'm trying to think where did I see this, but I've seen it because they in have person. a new the Boots and Flaming Saddles or where it is. They have Flaming Saddles in the Hell's Kitchen. Yeah, they have like a, this new jukebox, and I was complaining to the bartender because you go to select your song and it asks you what gender you are. Excuse me? And I was like, to went to the, I didn't answer it for the sake no, of everybody. How? I was like, I'm not answering this question. No. Yeah. And I told Why the bartender, would... I was like, the machine's broken. It wants to know my agenda. And he's like, what? I'm not answering the question. And Stupid, it won't play right? your song? No, you have to answer the question. And it's like male, female. Why? I know. That's why I didn't answer it. I'm like, I'm why are you asking me this? Dead. I'm trying to get to a Mariah playlist. <laughs> <laughs> You're in the country bar. You don't need to know what gender I am. I'll play Right to Dream. Yeah. <gasps> Girl. I know. Anyways, that's why Saturday is going to be so much fun. Because None of that mess. not going to have to deal <laughs> with gonna that. It's going to be, you can and relax. Yes. All right. Okay, guys. <laughs> um, stay tuned. Splash break. And we'll be right back. Hey. 
Hey guys, don't forget you can support the show and get more Mariah Report by joining our VIP club for as little as $1 and you get bonus shows, perks, free gifts every now and then, a lot of stuff. So check it out. All you have to do to join the VIP club is go over to patreon.com slash the Mariah Report. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash the Mariah Report. The link is in our description. Okay, we're back from our break. Yes. And with us, we have a special guest, DJ Bright Light, Bright Light. Welcome. Hello, Thank welcome. You. Thanks for having me. Of course. Of course. We got to talk Mariah. Well, yes. first of all, we called you in here because we saw that you have a party happening. Yes, I do. Uh, I am a gigantic Mariah Carey fan. Um, something above a lamb, what is it, like an ew, who knows? Uh, oh, um, <laughs> like a senior uh, lamb? Yeah. yeah, I am a huge fan of her work, and I throw a weekly tea party at Club Coming um, okay. every week, and I pick a different artist to like focus on each week. So this week, uh, the party's called Chantus You Stay, and it is love it. a tr- tribute it. to Mariah Carey's weird and wonderful and glamorous glittering catalog. Everything about her. Yeah, I yep. cannot wait. So you do these parties once a week? Yes, every Saturday, 3 to 8 p.m., Oh my God, that's amazing. Yeah, so we, I'm like a big, big pop culture fan. So I've had parties with like a, uh, like a Fleetwood Mac, Grace Jones, Bette Midler, um, David Bowie, um, all those kind of like icons. I have like Uh a theme for each of them. And then I do study things like movie songs and um, like a sort of Grammys party where you could vote for your best and worst songs. Mm. Oh my God, I wanted to go to that party too. Yeah, so it's all, all good fun. Now the theme is Romeo and Michelle. Every week, right? Yeah, yes, it's based on my love of Romy and Michelle's high school reunion. So people come and they mingle and they twirl and they put like name tags on and you can make requests via post-it note. Mm. They, oh. they invented so when we come to the Mariah party, mm-hmm. we can request songs yes. on post-it notes. It's, it's encouraged, it's actively encouraged. Yes, we yes. love that because normally oh. you have to beg the you, DJ. <laughs> oh my God, like going up to any DJ in any like homosexual bar is like... Um, no, they're gonna yell at me yeah. if I request Mariah. <laughs> but then, like three drinks, and you're like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna do like, it. I'm doing yeah. it." This, yeah, this just is honestly, play. my policy is just do it nicely. Like I flip out when people don't talk to me like a human being. Right. So like people will come up and they just go Prince, and you're like, "What about uh, it? Uh-huh. <laughs> what like the concept what? of a Prince? What like what? Who? just say." Do you have any prints? Could uh-huh. you please play prints? Thank you. Like I'm not Alexa, uh-huh, you know. Right. <laughs> that's <laughs> my that's my kind of benchmark thing. Like if you talk to me like a person, I will try and play your request. If you don't, goodbye. It's not happening. Yeah, goodbye. Don't bark a song name at me. I don't I don't go for that. No. How annoying is that for you? It's just dehumanizing and I find it rude. I feel like things these days like Alexa and all these kind of things have removed the need for manners mm. in the world. Uh-huh. And I find it disgusting. Like I'm from I grew up next door to a coal mine and I say please and thank you. So I feel like everybody else who's grown up with money can do exactly the same. Right. Like it doesn't take much. It, takes it doesn't take much. I, it's I free. work with the general public myself, so I know. So you how know. It goes. Yes, you know. <laughs> Okay, so now when we go in and we're requesting Mariah on the post-it notes, like mm-hmm. how <laughs> deep into her catalog can we request? Do, um, like you got I everything on I have hand? everything. Yes. Okay, good. So you're oh, a hardcore yeah. lamb. Are we doing vinyl only or can we do vinyl and digital? It's not vinyl only, no. I have okay. all my vinyl with me just for like the remixes that weren't digitally released and uh-huh. you know some 12-inch versions and stuff. But um, I'm encouraging people to go as wild as they want like oh besides deep cuts this is know. like a lamb's dream it really is it? Yeah. i'm yeah. telling you we're getting all the lambs and we're going so it's, it's, it's this saturday mm-hmm. the 23rd, 23rd yeah. from three, 3 to 8, 8 yes at club cummings yes in the east on, village and now uh, yeah it's 505 east 6th street okay it's a really cool spot it's though. great Mark, i've been there a few been there. times yeah i have not been there but. it's very small though so get down early if you want to come yeah okay to get a seat uh, there, no, yeah, there will be no there seats. Oh, it's all oh, taken. Dancing out. girl. You'll be dancing. Oh, all dancing. Deep. Mingling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If Mariah comes, I will get her a seat. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll see what she's up to. Yeah. See what she's up to. Um, no, it's a great space. It, it reminds me of the movie Cabaret. It has that kind yeah. of like old timey yes. German feel. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm in the 50s. But those right. like old lamps. We'll over be the taking bar. you back to the, the 90s, 80s, 90s cusp. 
Okay. This Saturday. Oh my god! Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, it's gonna be great. So it's gonna be all dancing, and you're uh, probably encouraged to wear some Mariah merch. If probably. you would like to, that would be wonderful. I love. He's wearing bright light, bright lights. Wearing his charm, charm bracelet. bracelet. Yes. That was my favorite. I think from that tour, that was my favorite shirt. The it's one. a great shirt. It's a great shirt. Did you I, go to that tour? I didn't know. Um, have I ever seen her live? Oh, um, good question. Well, I <laughs> tour myself. So a lot of yeah. the time when artists I want to see are playing shows, I'm not anywhere near where they do shows. Yeah. Um, so I've seen, I actually went to the um, Andy Cohen taping with her. Okay. Oh. So I've, I've seen her <laughs> perform as such. Her yes. um, but I don't know if I've seen her actually live, live. Singing oh live. Yeah, so it's going to be... Are you going to Radio City Music Hall? Absolutely, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh no, yeah. I'm oh, completely lying. I've been to three oh. of the Christmas shows. I'm so stupid. Oh, the Christmas <laughs> show. Oh, thanks. And which is around the okay. corner from here. Yeah, um, that's true. Yes, okay, I, uh, you've, but seen I, it, you've seen her. Because it's not her full catalogue. Right. right. I think Christmas of that as like, like her as the Christmas Jesus spirit. Yes. Not necessarily as just herself. You know? right. True. <laughs> no, it's funny. You think those shows are separate from her like regular they are. Mariah tours. Yes. They really they are. are. And you know, we've been to so many. And once you see more than one, one. It's just like it's all the same thing. Yeah. Forget about it. <laughs> but it's still just, perfect. It's, yes. oh, it's amazing. Uh huh. It's amazing. And plus, this year we forgot Christmas because she didn't do it. We in didn't. The US, so it was cancelled yeah, in New York. There was no Christmas was this no year. Christmas no, it's tragic. Year. I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. We make it through. Um. So you're gonna see the caution tour at Radio yes. City. That's yes. your first Mariah concert. Full Mariah. Concert, Mariah? Yeah. Oh my god. Oh yeah. My god. Going, going to die, going to going die. To die or Have you dead. checked the set list and everything? I've seen a couple of them. Yeah, I'm very happy with that. It's a pretty good one. It's, it's a, a good it's one. A it's list, a good yeah. one. I'm excited. Yeah, and dance mixes finally. Yeah. Awesome. Right up Can't your alley. Wait. Yep. Now I'm, you tour. So what are you toured? So I Doing make music. DJ sets? Uh, no, I make music as bright light, bright light. I make pop music, um, and my DJing kind of stems from that. So I've put out three full length albums, um, and the last one. Uh, Without sounding like I'm boasting, it had like Elton John and Scissor Sisters and oh, Alan Cumming on it. Singing? And yes. Oh, get out. Wow, of get out of here. How do we find that? Uh, on iTunes? iTunes. The regular way? Uh, available now on iTunes. Yeah, like <laughs> iTunes, vinyl, CD, whatever, like, you know, all the usual yeah. aspects. Torrents, if you can't bother to spend any oh, money. Oh, wow. Who knows? Um, <laughs> so I want to talk about the title of the party, Shantae, or what Chanteuse. is it? Chanteuse You Stay, you stay yeah. which is sort of like a ripoff of a drag race. Yes, which I didn't realize they were going to do a Mariah Carey, you know, themed challenge before. Right, before. I named that, yes. yes. So it's very uh, timely, let's no, say. No, oh, yeah. it worked out just perfectly, yeah, didn't, didn't it? it? So did you watch... Um, um, you're a big Mariah fan, so did you yes. watch this week's episode of Drag Race? Yes, I did watch it, yeah. <sighs> How upset were you? I was, I would say maybe somewhere between um, livid and murderous. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, Martin, you haven't seen this episode yet? I saw what I have to see, and I got phone calls of outrage. Oh, of course, yes. I know. Oh, oh, the customer service line was ringing oh, again. Oh, yes, and our Twitter and everything. Mm, everything. So. Your phone is still on fire, like physically on fire. Exactly, on yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, when phone calls happen, that's when it's serious. Yeah. I, you're like something major is going down in the yeah. world <laughs> if your phone won't stop ringing. Um, okay, so none of those drag queens will be winning this year because I presume not it was just so massively under-researched and just unintelligent right mm-hmm. I feel like at the very least even if you know nothing about it you could still have made it funny mm-hmm. right you know like I don't know much about for example I don't know JLo's life personal life right but I could have vamped something about how dumb I am about it to make it funny mm-hmm. right they, they were just so unentertaining with the whole skit that they did it was just so bad it mm-hmm. was poorly acted it was poorly thought out yeah it was awful it was really awful from beginning to end and <sighs> it really was and when rupaul came into the workroom and started talking to all the mm-hmm. girls and was like throwing out these mariah isms and they had no idea what they were I know. that should have been your clue to change, like change, change it topic. now yeah. i yeah. love that they did a, like a mariah segment because yeah. i've been waiting yeah for how many seasons they just you know what was it last all stars was the first time they ever did a lip sync to mariah and yeah. now on this season they're doing like uh you know whatever it is a little segment mm-hmm. so i was like really excited for it i was like oh my god the mm-hmm. church of mariah mm-hmm. like it's gonna be genius yeah also shangela won the challenge doing the new, oh, year's, the eve new year's eve thing, thing. that's right. true yeah okay yeah. so there have been a couple mariah folding it in now but this time yeah. it was big and oh. it was also like the biggest bomb Flop. like it fluffed Off the franchise like, perhaps yeah, yeah. It, was, yes. it was shocking. It was so completely 
depressing. It really was, but I was glad that RuPaul like let all the girls know that like you majorly failed. Yeah. And, and you're punished. You are punished yeah. and you will all be lip syncing now. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. I think she should have sent them all home, but yeah. obviously <laughs> you, can't you can't do that. I think if they didn't have like a sort of like episode number contract with VH1, they exactly. possibly would have sent at least three of them home. I know. Mm-hmm. Like if it they wasn't, terrible. It, it, uh, each and every one of them were terrible. I can't even pick one that was good. There were two girls that like host did the the church and then there was the girl who um tried to convert people into a mariah fan Uh and then there were the singing girls and not a single one of them did anything good i'm surprised that the two that called the movie sparkle didn't get eliminated right right like that's shocking to me oh my god and then when they were still in the planning stages and that one Said she oh, sang a so she sang a, a, Whitney, a Whitney, song? Whitney song. Yeah, I was like, uh uh-uh. uh. Oh my god, there but, are just no words to the level of uh, just the madness, the idiocy yeah. that went on in that. It was, it was wild. It was absurd. But I wonder I if mean, this really... ha- what's happening with the young kids. They they're starting to mel- mate, merge Whitney and Mariah into yeah, one. Not many of them are young. Yeah, right, that's true. true. That's true. Some of these, some and of these, three of them are from New York. Right, like right, sugar cane. Like you know, you know Honey something. Honey Davenport, who's uh-huh. like, right? Honey is yeah. deeply into gay culture. Right. Yeah. Like, how, how do you, do you not, not know anything know? about Mariah Carey? I'm so sorry. But no, like, there's just that excuse. But also, the producers should have just gone, "Hey, we're doing a Mariah challenge tomorrow. Google right. it. Google it, or I something." Think they have their phones up, but still, I mean, just go home. Just or something. Just, yeah, <laughs> I know. All of you go home. <laughs> go, All of go. you. I can't with any <laughs> go, of them go. now. Yeah. So uh, I just can't. Yeah. So well, if you really want Church of Mariah Carey, I will 100 thousand percent be giving that to you on Saturday. on Saturday and I will not be playing so oh, emotional okay, good. <laughs> <of> emotions. <laughs> it's gonna be a healing you know I love so emotional. Yeah it's gonna be a so, healing moment. And us. we all need that. Yes. And it's gearing us up for Radio City on Monday. Well I'm Cannot just wait. Yeah. I was gonna say this is probably a good time for Mariah to come on the show, RuPaul. And start educating the people again. Let these kids know. Do a Mariah episode. Let these children mm. know. But I would be afraid now because, it, like, how did six girls know nothing? I bet mm. the other girls on the other team who chose Brittany, uh-huh. they did an amazing job. I bet none of them really knew about Mariah either. Right. But that's Probably. the thing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, when Lady Gaga went on RuPaul's Drag Race, all the queens were gagging. Yeah. Same thing with Christina. And I wonder if they would gag over Mariah or would they just be like, uh, whatever, it's Mariah. But then also, one of them who didn't know who Mariah Carey <laughs> was was gagging gagging over Troy Sivan going backstage. I'm like, if you know Troy Sivan, right. you definitely know more uh, yeah, about Mariah Carey than on. you just performed. Yeah. Like, he's he's really new. Right. And he's really, like, there's not much information about his life out there, whereas there yeah. are memes beyond memes of Mariah Carey. Right. So right. Like, Especially in the past decade or two. Yeah. You know, like, it's she's wild. very memeable. She's like, come on. Emancipation of meme is like her. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Uh, okay, so I want to talk more about the party. Now, is it going to be all Mariah music or will there be other things? Mix that you sort of like mix Normally what I do is I do play um, other stuff as well because, you know, there's the general theme each week and people don't come specifically for each theme. Right. Not everyone comes specifically for the theme, but mm. I want to play as much as I can. So it's going to be at least one song every three is going to be Mariah Carey. Oh, oh perfect. Oh, sign my ass up. I'm there, girl. Yeah. I love it. Okay, so what about, we want to ask you some of your favorite Mariah things. Okay. What's your favorite Mariah song? Like these, obviously, like we're not going to hold you down to them, but like my, they change daily. We know we that. Know how it goes. <laughs> but my my favorite Mariah song is quite um, an orthodox, and it's you don't know what to do. Oh, I love that. That's a good song. I think it's a fantastic song. And Chanteuse. Was, yeah, from Chanteuse. Oh, yes. I'm like, well, you don't <laughs> oh know what God. to do. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I got into a RuPaul <laughs> drag yeah. race moment. Now and who I, doesn't like, know Mariah? I lost my mind. <laughs> yeah. I lost my mind. No, I love You That's Don't Know so What yeah. To Do. Like, so I have like a top five, which is fairly consistent, <clears throat> which is that okay. um, fantasy yeah. underneath the stars. Uh-huh. Um, oh, God. What are the other ones that I always say? Like, honestly, eighth grade is up oh, there oh. now. You're like, oh. these are my jams, all and, of these. Like, <laughs> then I'm torn between, like, Honey, but it was a single, and... Um, There's some great Club Honeys, though. There are some great Club Honeys, yeah. Um, but what is it? Uh, 4th of July. 4th oh. of July. Oh, yeah. my God, love it. I think it's just so amazing. And there are so many tracks which could have been singles that uh-huh. never really were, mm-hmm. and then some, like, odd single choices. Like, in the UK, they released Open Arms, and it was top 10. Mm-hmm. Right. And, it's right. you know, her performance is great on that, but there's, like... Underneath the Stars. Which right. I was on a single. Hello. Um, yeah. But yeah, her catalog is endless. It's endless. Now, when did you start loving Mariah? Uh, I think it was the Daydream album. Mm-hmm. Because, mm-hmm. you know, in the UK, 
she didn't actually have that many hits prior to that. Like, Emotions was only just top 20. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, so Vision of Love was top 10. Um, Emotions was top 20, and the others kind of bubbled under a lot. Same in so, Australia. Right. So for me, I only really saw her as, like, a huge star when um, Fantasy came out. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. And she I sort of, like, made that global crossover. I just thought crossover. that that, like, hip-hop sample, you know, with my you know, inane childhood understanding of it, like how that sound paired with her voice was super cool. And that's what really turned me on to like the rest of her catalog. And I'm like, it was a very un-British sound, Mm -hmm. you know? So it was very different in terms of pop music for me. And I just completely fell in love with everything after that. Mm -hmm. You you get sucked in. Mm -hmm. It's that easy. And then you need everything. (laughs) Now, do you like love, do you prefer like club mixes because you're DJing? Like what's easier to mix and play in a club? Uh, I play pop parties. So really the remixes are harder to DJ. Oh. But I do quite often play the um, Dave Morales uh, Dream Lover remix. Good. Oh, classic. Um, the classic mixes actually are probably the easiest to DJ like that or like Honey. Um, but, oh, I did play the CNC mix of Anytime You Need a Friend, friend. as well. Mm. But I tend to have to make my edits of them because they're quite long. Right. Mm. And it's a pop party, so people aren't really there for like a 12 minute. Right. You know, as much as I want to play this. <laughs> I would be there. I mean, I would. <laughs> yeah. But the intense, we, we like, flyaway like... reprise, like, uh-huh. you know. Uh, or, love. Or, or like the fantasy one with like the sirens uh-huh. and everything. Oh, yeah. Um, I'd be down. So for yeah. me, the originals work better when I'm DJing. Right. Um, but I do love a lot of the remixes. And she really is one of the people that has defined re inventing a song through a remix Mm -hmm. by re-recording the vocals and doing all the kind of amazing gospel arrangements with like the fantasy remixes and Dream Lover and and everything. It was just, no one was doing that. It was so cool. She's Mm. like the queen of remixes. I mean, that's one thing I sort of miss about her current, you know, music. But I mean, I understand like, you know, back when she was doing all these remixes, she was like so into it. Now she's a mother. She's doing other things. Here's the thing that that people probably don't know is like those remixes cost a lot of money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... And time. And at the time, she was selling a lot of records. So say if you pay like $20,000 for a remix of David Morales or whatever it would cost at the time, you're going to sell 20,000 records, so it'll break even. But now, with downloads, with no one's stre- buying yeah. anything. Streaming doesn't really bring that much revenue. So it, I don't think that it would be feasible to do that many remixes now, right. even you, for someone like her. Because mm-hmm. you're not making anything from it. Yeah, and it really, it's only like the lambs that want those mixes. Mm-hmm. Like it's not doing the same purpose. So like in the day, Morales would take her into the club charts and like hundreds of thousands of people would hear that. But if she released one of those now, it would be like, you know, 10,000 people would probably lose their minds, but it wouldn't bring a new audience to her. Mm. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Totally makes sense. Such, totally yeah. makes sense. But either way, I'm but still, I still want for them. Yeah, me, I, mean, I well, still want I know. them. Well, back in the day, like when you'd hear other artists like Madonna or another pop artist do a remix, it was never the same as a Mariah remix. No. She was really yeah. leading Mariah always, the pack. always like redid it. Redid yeah. it. Like, okay, <laughs> two of my favorite, favorite like club remixes are, Always Be My Baby mm-hmm. and um, the Junior Vasquez Heartbreaker If mm, You Should wow. Ever Be Lonely I could listen to that yeah, that was great over and over and over again yeah mine like, seriously the Butterfly original re-song the, the Deaf Job I think Def it's like Job, the Deaf Be Fly or where she something. re-sings the whole song yeah. amazing and then have you heard it yeah you know it um, and then Always Be My Baby Club Mix yeah. It's my jam. And here's the thing. I remember when I discovered that I was being a baby club mix, probably like 96, 97, like for some import CD store because yeah. they never released it here in the US. No, I found it on a I vinyl. I was so mad. Yeah. I was so mad because when I heard it, I was like, this is incredible yeah. and genius. And then when she did the remix album uh-huh. and she didn't put that on there. Yeah. That was so weird. Was like, yeah. That's like I you're wonder, missing out. Well, see, I wonder if it was because she changed the lyrics in it. I wonder if like licensing or something Oh, stopped probably. it from doing it. Who that, knows? There's back label, you know, the back, yeah, the back end. Who knows? I don't know nothing of it, but mm-hmm. I'm still mad. <laughs> um, what are some of your favorite um, club mixes of Mariah's? Like we did that. Ne- Always be, wait, no, we did anytime that. you need a friend. Oh, anytime yeah. you need a friend. Okay, Dream Lover, Dream Lover, Dream Lover. that's it. Okay. Fantasy. Uh-huh. Um, I did love the My All remix, but I wish that mm. I think that was one that she didn't re-sing the vocals because they were right. too soft. She added some, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I wish that she'd re-sung the verses so that it kind of it was it floated over the yeah. remix more. 
But watching her perform on top of the pops in the UK, the acoustic version into the dance mix, uh-huh. like Tony Braxton did with Unbreak My Heart, yeah. was just like wild. And like, that's probably when I realized I was gay. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. <laughs> Mariah will do it. She will. She will. <laughs> she will. Open your eyes, uh-huh. honey. Open your yeah. eyes. Wings spread, prepared to fly. Everything. Wasn't Everything. she on tour in Australia when she was doing the My All remix? Yes. And she was having yeah. vocal problems. Therefore, she could not go in and re sing mm. the whole even thing. She wanted to. There you go. But again, mm. you know, she's busy. She stays she's booked. Busy. Now, you have an accent. Yes. Where are you? No. Is it from? I'm, no, everyone has an accent. <laughs> yeah. I'm from Wales, which Wales. is in the UK, mm-hmm. um, for those who don't know. I don't know. It's not I London. mean, they know that, but... It's not London, no. It's a different country. <laughs> yeah, huh? Is it? Uh, yes. Oh. Yeah. I'm so Wales geography. is a country in the UK, um, and I grew up next to a coal mine in like a very rural part of the UK. So for me, music was like how you find out about the world. Yeah. And, you know, people like Mariah sampling a hip-hop beat, brought um that world into my world you know uh-huh. and that's how i learned about like a completely different style of music that wasn't really that popular where i grew up and yeah her samples let me know about other artists and you know the gospel thing and like the christmas album was amazing because then that's something like you know your grandparents could listen to as well and you could like get them uh-huh. into her and yes she really did have like a period where like her legacy could reach almost everyone and it was amazing but yeah. i find that so fascinating because i grew up in suburban sydney australia and again my primary school we weren't even in high school we're singing songs the whole class is singing mariah mm. carey songs i always find it fascinating that the reach that she has mm. in these yeah. like random places and i think people forget about it because when you see things like this on rupaul's drag race you're like well where what rock have you been living under yeah. because mariah really does cross over into everything she's touched upon every genre of music there yeah. is and lands and countries exactly. cities and countries around the world yeah. uh-huh. so, so it's, it's also just... strange to me that they don't like fine they're younger and they don't know they weren't around when she was in her heyday i wasn't around when billy holiday was in her heyday mm. and i'm aware of her life i wasn't right. around when tina turner had her heyday or Cher had her first heyday but i'm still aware of it and it's like right you are as interested as your brain lets you be, I suppose. Mm-hmm. And like, if you just don't care about culture and doing any research, cool. Right. But like, don't use age as an excuse. Mm-hmm. No, no excuse at all. I Especially think. if you're in the pop culture world, like these girls are on. You're, in, you know, you're on TV. a pop culture show. To say that you don't know anything about pop culture shows, like you shouldn't be there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you, I have the thing. Like, if you want people to share your cultural worth, invest in other people's cultural worth. And like, mm-hmm. if you don't share the work of other people that doesn't benefit yourself i don't think it's worth sharing your work because you're just in it for yourself Mm -hmm. like you don't care about culture you're not adding to culture you're making money from culture it's very different it's a very Mm. different thing that's why i think years ago i stopped watching american idol like after like season one or two well because i love kelly clarkson but anyways (laughs) um you know, the one week on American Idol, they had, you know, they have like theme weeks mm-hmm. and they had a Beatles week and none of these kids knew any of the Beatles songs. And I was like, how are you a singer mm-hmm. and you don't know the yeah. history of it's, it? It's, it's Even wild. just the songs. It's really a shame. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, I'm not a singer. I'm not any, I'm not musical at all, but I know a Beatles song. Mm-hmm. You know, I know the hits. I know Elvis. I know all these things. Mm-hmm. I know all these people. Obviously, I know most about Mariah, but like, <laughs> come on, like, where have you been? Yeah. This yeah. is this is your forte. This is your passion, yeah. and you know nothing. Get out of here. I'm done. Yeah, fine. If you don't claim to be working in the entertainment industry and you don't know about them, that's absolutely understandable because right. that's not your world, and you're a casual mm-hmm. um, digester of culture, like most people in the world are. Mm-hmm. But if that's the world that you're putting yourself into and saying like, I am a performer, I am a pop culture icon, or presence and you don't know anything about pop culture then like what on earth are you right. <laughs> you know what i mean are you? right like you, i don't say like i'm a teacher but i've never studied mm-hmm. uh-huh. like you can't do that you no. can't i'm a firefighter but i've never put out a fire yeah like come on it just doesn't make any Even sense mariah carey's put out fire right <laughs> yes remember that yeah. story from valentine's day years ago yeah. i mean come on well um, to your point like it's it's <laughs> odd that these people are in the clubs and mariah's a staple in the club 
Right. They like, should be hearing it at some point. Haven't these and girls ever lip synced to a Mariah song right. before? If you've not, something's wrong. And even well, casual, some of them have never sewed before, and apparently, well, right. True, uh-huh. true. True. But even like people who are casual pop culture consumers, they know Hero. They know All of for Christmas. Of course. If they you know, don't know All of for Christmas, yeah. you're like, honestly, where are you? Because it's right. Right. top five every single year. Uh-huh. Who Absolutely. are you? Yeah. yeah. You're trash. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Sorry, you're trash. trash. <laughs> and you know what really makes me mad about, mad about All I Want for Christmas is you is that people don't realize that she's written. R- written no. Like, come on. Yeah. Like, who, I, know. I know, like, she has it, like, she made it sound like a classic time but it's song, perfect. but it's, so perfect. it's perfection. I was literally just listening to the a cappella version of that the other day. Oh, the leak one? Yes. The leak. I will listen to that one <laughs> all the time, year round, and I still get my life. <laughs> all right. So, um, uh, upcoming club comings. This Saturday, mm-hmm. all Mariah, and you're going to be giving away little Mariah trinkets. There are things, yes. raffles, uh, so, so we're going to have fun. Yeah, there's a raffle ticket for um, the chance to win some Mariah Carey goodies, like the pin badges, which you might have missed out on. Yes, some, that's a like, big deal, because that pin yeah. was hard to get. It was a hot, hot commodity over it was. there, yeah. Mariah So if you need a pin, so have a few you have those. to come down. Uh, there's some uh, number one to infinity CDs. There's a caution CD. Uh-huh. There's a couple other little pin badges, and... Uh, yeah, that's it. And then the rest of the time, you can just request songs that will give you life. Oh yes. my god, I'm it's seriously excited. I'm Me thinking, too. What, am I gonna wear what Mariah shirt? Am I gonna wear? I know, and I love it's daytime <laughs> too. Oh my god, that's that, the best yeah. part. Again, the hours. What is it? Three to eight. Three to eight. Then you Girl. can just like leave absolutely drunk off your face. At absolutely, 8 PM, and get, get a bed. burrito. Yeah, yes. fly home. <laughs> yeah, and just like listen to the whole back catalog for the rest of the evening. Uh-huh. Still be in bed by twelve. Exactly. Yes, that's my kind of party, honey. Yeah. <laughs> no lies there. Because I. What can't is your favorite Mariah album? A butterfly for sure. Uh, Absolutely. I mean, well, I love a lot of things. Like caution, obviously, is on like yeah. constant repeat right now. But butterfly is like pretty much perfection from beginning to end. Like I love Emancipation of Mimi, mm-hmm. but then I don't like uh, that song to the floor. You mm-hmm. know, like it's mm-hmm. cute or like say something is not my favorite. But butterfly for me is like perfect. Every mm-hmm. song I love. Mine's right. um. Well, it was butterfly. But now it's switched back to rainbow. Okay. You see, it could change. Yeah, it yeah. changes. It, it can <laughs> change, yeah. And now Caution's interrupted my top three. Because uh, it used to know, be... Yeah, I don't know where to place Caution yet, because I'm mm. like, it's there. But, but it's, it's up like, there. It yeah, might have it to be is. to the side. Yeah. Because it's its it own, like, tied with its like, own moment. You know. Yeah, exactly. How about you? Favorite album? Honestly, start to finish, mine is Me, I Am Mariah, The Elusive Chanteuse. It's really good. Oh, yes. I, I really think that it was undermarketed, and I think, like... Some of her strongest writing, like Cry, I think is amazing. Mm-hmm. So Faded is amazing. My jam. Oh my God. Um, like, you don't know what to do. Should have been a gigantic summer hit single. Yeah. Absolutely, with a fabulous um, video. Yeah, with a every, fabulous like, it's video. It's so fun. So good. It was such a fun, well written record with some ultra cool production that I just think went completely under the radar. Yeah. But for like a classic one, I think Butterfly. Yeah. Because yeah. I just, I didn't. I liked it at the time and I didn't understand how good it was because to my British ears, like that style of like R&B and production just wasn't in our vernacular. Mm. So it sounded like too smooth for me at the time. Mm -hmm. And I didn't dive into it as much as I should have done. But with like adult ears now and like after listening to music for the last 20 years or whatever that is, I get like how how amazingly cool it was Mm -hmm. and how brilliant the lyrics are mm. and like who she was working with and what they did and like Honey is just one of the most amazing singles I was just Imagine jamming out you, to Honey yesterday if you came out with your comeback single like Honey you just sit there and just like laugh at the rest of the world until you died uh-huh. exactly. it's so amazing it's so, yeah. oh my it's god it's so cool oh my god and the the video matches it so perfectly it's amazing mm-hmm. I mean my gosh what is your favourite Mariah video um mm. oh it's I hard. think maybe Heartbreaker just because of Bianca. Okay. That's a good video. It's a great love video. That. It's not my favorite single. Uh-huh. I love it, but it's not my favorite single. Yeah. The video. I'm oh now, see now I'm leaning towards breakdown as my favorite video. No, oh yeah. Just because of the looks, but then the roof is like the ultimate. The roof Hello, is so good. I love the roof. The, I think my least favorite video is Butterfly. Oh, she I had that really? insane wig. I love that wig. You don't like That's the one of my favorite veins? wigs. <laughs> I just <laughs> and the raggedy dress. I love that raggedy I think look. It's the the bangs with that makeup and the lighting was just like somebody oh, was just I really loved it. Oh, no, How it was funny! Butterfly. It was it was a choice. <laughs> <laughs> Choices. Uh, no, the they, no they okay. Maybe no? that might be like the least of the pack off of yeah. butterfly. But like she's had some questionable videos. I mean, not. To to, like talk shit about Mariah but like 
Um, hate you. I want to know what love is. I want to know what love is. I think I want to know what love is. Is the worst. I don't. I don't. Pretty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I do like the song. I don't. You do like the song. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There's somebody. Somebody it's there has for to. Somebody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing about her. She makes a song for everyone. It's, it's right. true. It's true. <laughs> yeah. But you know, and I love the song "Hate You." H A T E U. Yeah, and great. I love all the remixes. Mm-hmm. That's one of the best remixes. I think. Yeah. My boo mashup. Oh my god. Just. So unbelievably cool. And mm-hmm. again, like it's just lost out there in nowhere land. So unless you're a hardcore lamb or unless you come, come to Club Cummings and mm-hmm. request it on your post-it note, yeah. you really don't get to hear it. Yeah. You know? Because you forget. Yeah. And it gets buried. On my post-it note right now. Put it in my notes. See, I just discovered the Never Too Far <clears throat> slash Hero Club mixes. Mm-hmm. Oh, gosh. I'm living my best life for those. Because so it gets buried and lost. In- it does. So much gets buried and lost like that. Always be my baby club mix. Because uh-huh. there's so much good stuff. I'd be so damn mad. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so um, I think we are I think just about good. running out of time. Yeah. We can't extend too far. All right. But to remind the people, DJ, bright light, bright light. Yes. Or bright light X times two. Yeah, for the socials, pro- it's pro- bright light X two. So like Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And the party is Romy Michelle NYC. Michelle has one L. Just to clarify oh, that. Oh, yeah. Good to know. Does everyone um, gets that wrong? Mira Savino know about it? She does. She tweets about it frequently. Does she oh, really? Wow. Okay, yes. And you know the Mariah connection there. Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. Uh, wise girls and all of that. Fabulous. She tweeted yes. us recently. Yes. She's, like, she's yeah. awesome. Need, she's yeah. really, she's one of the good ones that does pay attention to what people are doing in pop culture mm. and sees people doing like homage and, and, and like, Loves that, right? Right, and will like retweet things and stuff like that's yeah. the way to do it. You know? Yeah, you know, well, yeah, be interactive. Yeah. But we we had tweeted her. I think you you sent the tweet because we needed to clarify mm-hmm. if she and Mariah had fought on the set of Wise Girls. Yeah, and I think she said. She, well, because I found the article and I was just reading over it again, and then it got to the point where it said like. Um, Mira Savino and Mariah Carey were wrestling on the floor and then Mariah threw a salt, salt shaker at her. So I took a picture of her, like, did this Mira, like at Mira, did this really happen? And she wrote back, like, um, we didn't fight, but she threw a salt shaker at me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You know, Mariah ain't afraid to fight. I feel like she's <laughs> not afraid to fight because remember when she was, like, just recently walking through, like, Radio XM and she walked past Andy oh, yes. and I just Sandra Bernhard? And, you know, Sandra Bernhard back in the day was, like, saying such Talk shit about know, her, yeah. Shit, and she's like... And then Sandra Bernhard's like, come in, Mariah, come in, Mariah. And she's like, oh, don't give me that bullshit. Yeah. Whatever she said, I don't remember, but... Amazing. Mariah's not afraid. She's not, not mad. She's She's many things and she's never afraid. No, never afraid. She might be an imperfect never angel. Far, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, Lambs, everybody listening, join us. We will be there this Saturday, Saturday. the 23rd, mm-hmm. Club Cummings. What's the address again? 505 East 6th Street. Fabulous. Put it in the Google Maps because that's what I'll be doing. Yeah. Or you'll, you'll show me where it's at, Martin. Yeah. I'll take you yeah. in there. <laughs> we'll meet up. We'll go together. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. And be sure to follow DJ Bright Light, Bright Light at how do you say it again? What's Times two. It? Times Bright two. Bright light X two. There you go. On all the social media formats. And we will uh, see you all this Saturday. Thanks, Thanks for, coming so for coming over. Thanks for coming over. And uh, yes. we'll see you soon. See you soon. Bye. Okay, we're back. Yes, yes. We're Wrapping back. it up now. Thank you, Bright Light, Bright Light. Yes. Follow Love him mm-hmm. on all the social media. Um, follow us Yes At the Mariah Report Share your thoughts with us Share it with your friends mm-hmm. uh, Don't forget It's called the Caution Week The countdown is on Absolutely Upon us Absolutely um, So this Saturday We'll be at Club Cummings Yes We'll post all the info Like on our uh, social media So yeah Check that out Don't forget um, Then I guess the day of the concert We'll just be We're going to make Rise Bar Here on 9th Avenue And 56th Street the base. The base. Yeah. But we'll be there. We'll be running around the Radio City, honey. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're if you in town, us, yes. say hi to us. Come say hi. Let's lamb out. Yeah. And, uh, so it'll exciting. Be, oh, it'll be too much fun. Too much fun. When was the last Mariah Carey concert? Not Christmas. Um, I told all you. All the hits. It was. And then, no, all the hits. Yeah, that's And right. then memoirs. Yeah, memoirs. Okay. So this yeah. is big. This is big. It's been a minute. I know. I can't wait. I yeah. can't wait. It's going to be a great show. Radio City is gorgeous. Oh, my God. It's going to look so good in there. I'm excited. Yeah. To see everything. I know. And lamb the fuck out. And I told That's you, it's my like anniversary 
ish of like going to see Mariah. The first time I the saw her was in Charm Bracelet in Radio City. It's amazing. I know. Look at that. A whole lifetime ago. Yeah. God. It's crazy to think about. But anyways, it'll be tons of fun. Um, meet us at the show, before the show, after the show, during the show. Be like, hey, bitch, what's up? Yeah. And um, we'll have fun. And come, come to this come party. to this party because that's going to be tons of fun too. And it's a very civilized hour, girl. Yes, 3 it, p.m. Gr- and Perfect. then I could be home. Yeah. Luxuriating. Yes. Uh, at a decent hour. I, I know. can't wait. Well, so you can like recover in time. You have a whole day to Before, recover. Yes, and exactly. Then the concert. <laughs> exactly. So it's perfect. He's going to be like jammed up with post-it notes. Oh, I already have like 17. I know. On, on the list already. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it'll be fine because we will be hearing things that you normally don't get to hear. I know. It's going to be good. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. By this time next week, we'll be doing Mar- Mariah. Out. So we'll tell yeah. you all about our, our fun times on the next moments. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.